<laughs> hey what's up everybody in today's video i'm gonna show you how to get rid of your death pile and for it to never come back <laughs> as a general trivia question who is this if you know you know leave it in the comments below let's talk about first why this happens the number one reason why death piles happen is because you are not committed to what you purchased how do we fix that we are going to fix it with something that I call the conveyor belt method. Let me show you. First things first, you can't really fix something with this method if you are not committed. So you have to commit to all of your purchases. And let me show you how I do it. Once something comes from my truck or my vehicle, it comes to here and then it goes into other places like a conveyor belt. This sticker signifies a couple of things. This is lot, quantity, cost of goods and average. So this is how I do it. Generally speaking, when a reseller comes and they put pricing, like when you're putting pricing or you're putting SKUs or you're putting up your item, you put, well, I paid $8 for this. I paid $3 for this and I paid whatever for this and nobody cares. That's just a waste of time and it's very stressful. Along with the conveyor belt method, I'm going to show you a way for you to get rid of some of that stress. This is how you do it. Everything that I bought here is lot O. That's not a zero. That's an O. It's from A to Z. So this is lot O. There's quantity seven. That means there's seven items here. And I put the arrows, meaning everything here is the same lot. Cost of goods was $20. That means I paid 20 bucks. And if you divide 20 divided by seven is $2.85. So that's my average cost. This cost me $2.85. This cost me $2.85. This cost me $2.85. This did not cost me eight and two and one and none of that. This is going to help you a whole lot. Plus, this also ties into the conveyor belt method. This is for you guys. I wrote it this in just for you guys. I don't wrote, write that in for myself because I already know what I'm doing. But it's O, P, Q. P is the same. Lot, quantity, cost of goods, average. Everything here, there's six items, pay 13 bucks. Average was 216 an item. And mind you, when you do something like this, I recommend getting a sturdy shelf because you're going to load it with a lot of product. These shelves last. The, this is particle board, but trust me, it lasts. These things are super heavy, yet it doesn't break. And I can load it up with merchandise. So going back to the conveyor belt method, how does this actually work? Well, first off, you have lot O, P, Q, right? So it's going in order. So why do I put it in order? Because no matter what happens, lot O is next. Not lot P, not lot Q, not this is so cute, I want to do this now. Not this is very cool. Nobody cares. You shouldn't really think about it that way. You think about it in, a, in an order like a conveyor belt. Whatever goes in first is going to come out. Whatever goes in second is going to come out second. The only exception to the rule, because I'm not a robot and not everything is just, this is the only way to do it and that's it. But the only exception to the rule is that, for example, if this was, this is Ankyo and this cost, or th this will bring me about 40 bucks, 50 bucks maybe. If this was a Sansui receiver and it brought in $500 and I paid five bucks for it, then that is going to come out first. And the reason for that is because if I bring this out first and sell it, it's going to give me more cash flow. So there is exceptions to the rule. However, you can't break the rules all the time because this won't work. So what's next? Let me show you uh, by an actual example. Let me find my box. Where did I leave my box? I got it. Another recommendation I have is using boxes like these. These are produce boxes. You can get it at your local Walmart, local HEB, local, I don't know, whatever grocery store you have in the area. I get these from the auction house that we go because the gentleman that gives us our products puts them in these and I can bring them home, which is great. Look at this. It's freaking insanely tough. This is what I use to carry my product. So we're going to do lot O. This is only for example purposes, so I'm not gonna take everything right now because it's a lot. I'm just gonna take this. We're gonna assume that all of lot O is gonna go with us. So now, follow me. We're gonna go in. Oh, one other recommendation I have is if you really wanna make reselling work for you, if you really wanna have the energy, because it takes a lot of energy to do this, if you really wanna have all the energy in the world to do this, exercise. I have almost a full setup here. We have dumbbells right here. We have a full machine that can do legs, that can do back, that can do everything. And I definitely 
recommend you exercise. It gives you all the energy in the world in order for you to do the things that you have to do to make your business work. Let's go. Okay, now we're in the second stage of the conveyor belt. This is going to go... Well, I have to inspect it first and I'll, and I'll show you why. This is dirty, so it means I have to clean it. If you, my cameraman, will step back a little bit. No, nope, my cameraman stepped the other way, the other way, that way. <laughs> my cameraman doesn't know where I'm pointing sometimes. She's, uh, <laughs> she's videotaping. She's not looking at my fingers. I have to put this where it belongs. If you look at here, I have fix, ready to shoot, test, clean, find comps, and my favorite one, what the f so this, I, like I said, this was, uh, it needs cleaning, right? I have clean right here. You can put arrows, you can do whatever. I already know because this is my business, so I already know how this works. But everything from clean means everything from here that way needs to cleaning. Needs, needs me to look at it, needs me to do something, and needs cleaning. This is the same shelf that I have outside. Now, these things, man, these are super awesome. I found these at a garage sale a long time ago, and I bought them for 50 cents. They are really, really tough, very, very strong magnets that you can use. So the reason I, I use these all the time is because look, so for example, if that needs fixing or whatever, this is, I can just move it right there. From here on, that means it's ready to shoot. From here on, ready to shoot. So you are committed to all of this. How you do it is totally up to you. When you use to fix or when, when you want to fix stuff, when you want to test stuff, but remember that Nothing from over there, if this is full, completely full, nothing from over there can come here until you're done. Let's just say that tomorrow I need to shoot 20 items. My goal is 20 items. I have 20 items right here, ready to shoot, ready to shoot. So I'm just going to grab items from here and I place them here just to give them one last inspection. We'll put that back up there. If they're ready to go. I'm gonna, well, first I'm gonna remove my hangers, which shouldn't be here, but you know, things happen. I'm gonna turn on my light box. I'm gonna put this in here. And my phone is being used by my cameraman, so I'm gonna steal hers. Oh, what is that? That was more than a phone that I grabbed. <laughs> so I get my phone and I. Take all my pictures, make sure that I use my measurements, make sure that this is ready to go. Once this is ready to go, this item, for me, it would go, it wouldn't stay like this. I would grab a bag. As you guys already know, every time that I grab a bag when I'm on video, I do that. Because it's funny to me, even if it's not funny to you. I put it in here tied in a knot and then it goes in here so what is this area remember the conveyor belt method started outside which is from thrifting from garage sales from whatever i it moves into the first shelf and then when i'm ready from there it moves into the shelf that's behind my cameraman which i just showed you it moves to the prep area in case there's last minute prepping it moves into the picture box which you're gonna take all the photos that you need to take and then it moves into ready to be inventoried. This is, I have a lot to be, I have a lot to put away, but in this case, I'll tell you why this is taking me longer than usual. The breakables are a lot harder to put into inventory because sometimes you can't stack them. You can't put them in bins like these. It, God forbid this thing touches something else and it breaks the nose off or something, then now I can't sell it. So it's taking me a little longer than usual, but it goes into here. Is there a rhyme or reason? I, I try to keep them in lots because once you have the photos, they're going to be in order, right? So you're going to do them by lot. That way you already know that lot X it was $3.14 or whatever the case. So once you're listing, you have your numbers there. So everything goes in here and it goes into inventory. Once you're ready to inventory, let me grab my box again. Again, find yourself boxes like these. They're freaking awesome. Let's just, okay, we're going to take an easy one. Ooh, let me give you some info on this. Amazing. These I bought last year at uh, Target after Easter for less than two bucks. I don't remember exactly how much, but less than two bucks. So my business bought these. And in order to 
increase or to keep my cash flow up, put it on a card and within three months my business paid it off because I wasn't going to put these up until the following year. So you don't want to waste all your cash just on things that you're going to hold for a year because you need that cash to keep buying product, right? It took me three months. I paid it off. I paid a couple of, uh, you know, some percentage points on my money. That's totally fine because these are now selling for $25 free shipping. I'm making about 12 bucks per. And this weekend alone, I already sold seven. And I have, I don't remember, 30, 35 maybe that I bought. So this is one. Okay, let's just assume that, you know, we're, we're ready to go, right? We got a bunch of stuff to that it needs to be inventory and we go back up. Now this goes back. Remember the conveyor belt method? The conveyor belt method works the same way as it does in a big, like let's just say at a DC center for Walmart or for whatever. You grab it and now this gets inventoried. I'm gonna show you, don't mind this. This is personal stuff because this is a garage. I gotta show you this one. This is my new one. But I got this at a garage sale for 30 bucks. If, if you guys know whoever's mountain biking or motocross, Fox is very expensive. And this is a huge <laughs> bag. I love it. I got two helmets in there. My shoes, my chamois, my gloves, my everything. Freaking awesome bag. Okay, come this way. So I got lights everywhere. This is tight, but this is just the way I work. And it's totally fine. So I'm going to put this up. Let's just say, for example, I would put it up right here. So this is C 2.2. So now I would have already known that this was going to go up in C 2.2. Once I listed it, I throw it in here and done. That's it. Now it's inventoried. Let me mention something about, you know, putting it in a certain bin. Normally what, what I do is that if I have an empty or empty -er bin, let's just say this one, this is half empty. So I'm going to grab this bin and I'm going to take it inside when I'm listing so that everything that is going in that day is going to go into the bin. That way I already listed, I put the price, I put whatever, and then I put C2.2. That way I can inventory it. Now that I know where it goes that day, I move everything into the bin and I just bring the bin, the bin back over here. If I don't have that many products or if I if all the bins look full, what I do is that I come and I put this in here and I write it down on a piece of paper or on your phone or whatever. Then you go back until your listings and you, you do your active listings as normal. You press, you know, you, you do edit in the SKU list and you add C2.2 or wherever you skewed it. And that is the entire run of the conveyor belt method from truck to this shelf right here that has all of your inventory pre you taking it inside. Once you're done here, you take it inside to that big shelf that has the fix, find comps, test, whatever you, whatever you want to call it, right? You, you place stickers on there and then it goes into the prep area. Then it goes into taking pictures. Then it goes into the inventory shelf and then it actually gets inventoried and then you make money and that's it. Everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope that this really does take care of your problem. If you have a problem of having inventory that never moves. Remember, you have to commit because if not, this happens. Well, mine's not a death pile, but it's gonna look like this. You're never gonna touch it. You're not gonna make any money. And that's not what you want. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.